Hey there, it's Wes. Welcome to my favorite video of the month. In this video, we're going to talk about how my portfolio performed in June. We'll discuss my big gainers, the big losers, because I can al already reveal there are some big losers in my portfolio over the last month. And we're going to look at each individual stock. Building upon last month is that I will show you my passive income that I generated through my option selling portfolio on interactive brokers. So please stick around and enjoy the video. My current portfolio is worth $13,794. In this, I hold 23 different stocks, but ideally I would love to trim these down to a core 10 to 15 stocks, which I always show in my monthly goals video, which is coming up next week. June was an okay month for my different portfolio, growing from 13,200 to 13,800, a 4.5% increase. This was partly because of capital appreciation, monthly contributions and my biggest dividend month ever with a dividend payment over 100 euros in a single month. I'm super happy with my performance, dividend income and additions in the first half of 2024 uh, and I will try my best to keep it up. And if you want to follow my portfolio there will be a link to Didrin in the, in the description. Regarding spicy transactions and add-ons to existing positions or nice sales, this was a very boring month just like the past two months to be honest. Besides the monthly buy into the high dividend yield ETF, which I do every month, I haven't executed any transactions on single stocks in June. But I can already reveal that this still was a record month in passive income for me, but more on that later. Let's look over the performance of the US markets over the last month. Um, after a green May, mostly the, mostly the large cap tax stocks experienced another fat green month. The most notably one is obviously Nvidia, which added another 12% on the already 30% from May to its already insane market cap. Nvidia's market cap now exceeds the GDP of huge European countries like France and Italy. Now I want to continue to touch upon a topic on my channel that I introduced last month, option selling. It's what I've been doing for a while now and I first introduced this last month. You guys like this a lot, so hereby a new update on the portfolio income I received over the month of June. After the $315 in May, June was good for another $379. I'm very happy with this amount. I sold, I did the, uh, the wheel strategy on CleanSpark, I sold two covered calls, one on SoFi and one on Pfizer. My current strategy is the wheel strategy, which involves selling cash secured puts and if the option expires out of the money, I will receive 100% of the credit for which I sold the option and I can open a new one the next month. If I do get assigned, I have to buy 100 shares of the underlying of the option, against which I will almost immediately sell covered calls for even more option income. I do this month after month and in total, in total of, for 2024, I received $1,176 in premium, which I'm very pleased about. Please let me know in the comments if I should show you guys more of my options portfolio, what positions I hold and how I pick my positions. Now it's time to go over the performance of my positions over the last month. First up are my Vanguard ETFs. So let's start with the Vanguard All World ETF. It's still a 1.8k position in my portfolio, but, but as I announced in a previous video, this won't be for too long anymore. Um, I'm trimming this position down and I'm switching to Vanguard High Dividend. The All World ETF had a good month increasing by 2.89%, it had a dividend yield of 2.4% and it's a solid foundation in my portfolio. It pays quarterly dividends and it has almost 3,700 holdings. I'm up almost 16.5% on this position. However, I chose to switch to Vanguard High Dividend, which is currently almost 4.1k and it will increase more and more as I DCA into it each month. I even made my wife invest in it now. The higher dividend yield makes it way more interesting foundation for my portfolio and it aligns way better with my goals. It has a dividend yield of 4.55% versus the 2.4% of the Vanguard All World ETF. This ETF had a neutral month decreasing by only 0.59%. But now the most crazy thing is that they increased their dividends by 125% as I also explained in a previous video. It paid me a juicy 39 euros over June. On to the automotive sector in my portfolio. I currently hold $420 worth of Volkswagen and $280 in Stellantis. Noteworthy are the juicy dividend yields of 8.4 and 8.6%. 
Volkswagen took a big hit, decreasing a whopping 14%, which is partly due to the almost 9% dividend they paid out. While Stellantis continues to decrease with almost 7.5%, they have been on a downtrend lately. Currently, I hold two REITs in my portfolio. One of which is a relatively new position, and let's start with the existing position, which is Vici Properties. It didn't have the greatest of months, decreasing by 3%, but I'm planning to buy more into REITs as I explained in recent videos. I'm crazy about REITs, and it's my bet for the upcoming years. They were hit hard during the interest rate increases, but as I expect rates to stabilize and eventually decrease, I think REITs can outperform the market. What do you think about them? Besides this, REITs have also great dividends. My other position is Arbor Realty Trust, and I'm very happy as this adds a lot of dividend and growth to my portfolio. Arbor had a relatively neutral month, moving only 7 basis points over the last month. And in the last three months since I bought into this position, I'm up already a nice 13%. So technical analysis and patience really pay off, guys. Let's move on to the more safe stocks. So the consumer non-cyclicals. Uh, Nestle and PepsiCo, both huge enterprises, but they have been moving like crazy lately. Together, they make up around $700 and offer dividend yields of 3.3% and 3.27%. Nestle decreased by, by almost 5%, which is huge for a stable value stock like Nestle. Also, PepsiCo find a way to the downside, decreasing also 5% in June, which is, guys, this is crazy numbers for these kind of stocks. PepsiCo is also on my radar to buy a little bit more, as it's my goal to hold them in the long term. PepsiCo approaches interesting price ranges right now for me. In the consumer cyclical sector, I have the shoe giants Nike and Adidas. Both companies had a terrible month, decreasing a respective 5.5 and now 18% for Nike. Especially Nike was horrible, but I don't understand why, because the financials are actually very good. They beat earnings, so this price reaction after earnings was very surprising to me. So what did I do? I owned a lead position, which is going to expire in 2026 in my option trading account against which I'm going to sell covered calls each week, creating more passive income for me, while I also at the same time expect that the stock will recover from this big hit. Up next is Coinbase. With Bitcoin reaching new all-time highs earlier this year, this stock increased a lot. However, recently Bitcoin has, decreased, has been decreasing. Coinbase has been more stabilizing and only increasing 2% right now. It is currently worth $218 in my portfolio, and I'm up a whopping 280%. I'm very proud of this, and the cost basis for my position in, cost, in Coinbase is even negative. So even if the company would bankrupt right now, I would have still made a nice profit from the already from the shares I already sold. I have a little Dutch bias in my portfolio with Postanel and NN Group, two stocks I've held since the beginning of my dividend journey. Postanel is a postal service company like DHL and UPS. And N Group is an insurer. Both have very nice and juicy dividends, but PostNL has been in a long-term downtrend, decreasing 8% over the last month. Together, they make up around $700, and that's about around 5% of my portfolio. A little American tag is good for everyone's portfolio. I'm very happy to have bought into Oracle. It has a great dividend growth rate of 11%, outpacing inflation by far. This is a definitely a long-term hold for me, and price-wise, it increased almost 20% over the last month. A record month for, for me in this stock. I'm up around 35% in the last three months. In March, I also bought into United Health Group. It is sitting at $464, and it currently has a yield of over 1.5%, but with different growth rate over 13%, it will double its dividends every five years. This is what I love about dividend investing. Another new position I opened in April is Texas Instruments. I recently made a video about why I really like this stock. So be sure to check that out. Part of why I like it is its 17% dividend growth. I'm up already like 10% on this position. So my patience really paid off and using technical analysis really helped me to buy Texas Instruments at a good price. Then there are the long-term holdings and the high dividend payers in the tobacco industry. With Altria and Philip Morris, I have the two tobacco giants. 
I'm only missing British American tobacco, to be honest. But I don't know if I'm going to add it because I don't want to concentrate too much on the tobacco industry. Part of me is like, is it morally right to to do? Together they make up around $1,000 after I bought more into Altria a couple months ago. And both stocks had a small decrease in June. But their dividend yields of 8% and 5% make up for these small losses and these are definitely long-term holdings for me. I would like to expand in the financial sector. I currently only hold Citigroup as a real US bank um, and with a notional amount of $293 it's a quite a small position. I would love to get more exposure but should I? in which bank should I do this? Should I do this in Citigroup or another bank? Uh, mainly US banks I think. Please let me know down in the comments which is your favorite bank. Could be globally but most of the time I'm focused on the US banks because they get back up by the Fed so that's pretty safe in my opinion. Uh, Citigroup had a very good month increasing a nice 2.4%. I added also M MSCI to my list of stocks. This isn't a pure financial, but more a financial services company, providing index trackers and benchmarks for institutional investors like what I do at a pension fund. I made a video about MSCI explaining why it's a solid addition to everyone's portfolio. With double digit dividend growth, it would be very good for everyone. MSCI experienced a small decrease of 2.3% in June, but so far all my recent buys from March and April have been performing amazing. So if you follow my dividend journey, you know I had a lot of these stocks on my radar for so long. But in my opinion, they were always too expensive. But then April and March and May happened and a lot of these stocks decreased finally significantly. And my buy, my buy, my, my standing buy orders got hit. And now a couple months later, I can harvest the first double digit profits if I would were to sell them which I'm obviously not because I am a long-term dividend growth investor. So I'm going to make their dividends and profits compound in my portfolio. Last but not least, we have Starbucks and Walgreens. In recent months, I told you that I would like to expand my position in Starbucks. And that's exactly what I did over the past month. It's now worth around $500 in my portfolio. And I, I would be more than comfortable to buy more. It was down very bad after earnings and I also, just like I did with Nike, I opened a leap option in my portfolio, which is already up more than $300 in one month. Do you know what a leap is? Please let me know down in the comments and let me know if I should elaborate on more on my option portfolio and what my strategy is there. Starbucks is definitely a stock I want to, to own long term. Uh, Walgreens is the problem child of the portfolio and I do not know what to do with it. I'm a bit late to... <laughs> to sell them, but it lost another quarter of their value, decreasing like 26% of the last month. So cutting your losses doesn't really make any sense anymore. Anyway, anyway, more fun news. In June, I received a total of $115 in dividends. It's a record month for me, and I feel that the dividend snowball is really starting to roll. In the upcoming months, I will receive over $36 in July, another whopping $30 in August and $65 in September. I will reinvest these into more dividend stocks. So I received $115 in dividends and $380 in option premium income, totaling my passive income for the month of June on a nice $485. I'm yeah, simply amazed by this and I'm very happy and I'm yeah, more motivated than ever to build upon this. For now, I want to thank each and every one of you. The channel has been doing great. We passed the 165 subscribers, which I'm very thankful for. Thank you for supporting me with all the comments and likes. If you like my content, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel to follow my dividend adventure. So have a great day everyone. See you in the next video.